Welcome to getting naked with your clothes on. No, it's got nothing to do with physical nudity and everything to do with mental and emotional freedom. I'm Dr. Pat Williams and I'm delighted you could join me. This program will liberate you from your punishing self-judgments, vicious inner critics, toxic fears, and limiting beliefs. The potential here is huge. Just imagine transforming your daily grind into an exciting adventure. Being free to enjoy a fulfilling life brimming with love, belonging, rich relationships, passion, serendipity, and happiness. At this point, I hope you've had a chance to read my free breakout ebook and print the worksheet I provided. In this seminar, I'll illuminate key points from the 12 modules that make up the core curriculum of my program. I'll also share exercises and practices, and I'd like you to pause this seminar when they come up so you can write them down. Use the questions on the front of your worksheet to capture the concepts that resonate with you. Then take a few minutes to assess how embracing them will enhance your life and write down those answers. Use the back of your worksheet to write down the exercises I introduce in this seminar. Use them to transform your life right here, right now, today. I created the Getting Naked program for therapists, coaches, and individuals wanting to have more, be more, and do more with their lives. It was inspired by my 2016 book of the same name, which was inspired by one of my most influential college professors. I'll never forget the day he signed my copy of his latest book and challenged me to carry his work forward, because tragically he died in a freak accident the very next day. Sidney Girard, this one's for you. All right, let's get started. Module 1 shows you how to evaporate your worries like ice cubes on a hot summer day. You'll gain freedom, relief, and an incredible lightness of being by sharing your naked truth with someone you trust while fully dressed. If you've been carrying a heavy secret for years, such as an undisclosed abortion, adoption, experiences of mental or physical abuse, sharing your experience and your feelings about those experiences with a trusted coach, therapist, or confidant delivers a powerful sense of unburdening, relief, and release. It can also expose gifts you were previously unaware of that you can use to be more productive, happier, or communicate more effectively. What drives success in all aspects of human existence are emotional awareness and emotional development. Both make or break our confidence, relationships, parenting, health, work success, and overall happiness. Here's an example. A former client is an in-demand ghostwriter. She crafts top-notch articles, essays, and books for politicians and other professionals. When I asked why she hadn't authored her own books, her answer uncovered a heavy burden she'd been carrying for years. Apparently, she had written a book based on her notes from college classes she taught years before. This material was so familiar to her, she had not consciously realized that it was not all her own original material. After publishing her book, the author whose work she had copied contacted her and pointed out the plagiarized passages. She was devastated. It was a deeply embarrassing situation, and she could not believe that she had used so much of someone else's content. Although she had already resolved the issue with the other author, her subconscious theft haunted her, left her feeling dishonest. Revealing her story to me and the fact that I had just listened, did not judge, and gave her space to share her truth, left her feeling cleansed, relieved, and released. That's the power of self-disclosure, or as I like to say, getting naked. Use this practice to release the burdens that weigh on your heart and mind too by sharing your naked truth with someone you trust while fully dressed. Module 1 also addresses self-discovery. You'll experience and claim what's unique about yourself and others using a simple game, a fun way to learn about yourself and immediately increase your self-awareness. The game starts with this question. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? Pull out the worksheet now and write this down. I chose the Australian platypus as my animal because it's such a unique and multifaceted creature, much as I saw myself, adaptable, curious, not easy to categorize in a limiting way. I had unique strengths and ways of enjoying life that I used consciously. I also actively worked on improving aspects of my life that needed some work. These traits made me stand out as both unique and multifaceted. Of course, we are all unique and multifaceted, but too many people live out their entire lifetimes without knowing, valuing, or appreciating these aspects of themselves. Don't let this happen to you. Pause the seminar now and spend a few minutes figuring out what animal you are and why. And then share your answers with some trusted friends and invite them to play along.
you'll gain interesting and useful self-awareness you can use from this exercise to attract the best on purpose. Select magnificent people and ideal opportunities simply by owning and expressing your uniqueness. After speaking about uniqueness, the program focuses on perceived differences. Whether you call it judgment, discrimination, or racism, this topic is hotter than ever today as our global village shrinks and we find ourselves living in increasingly diverse societies. Some people react to others' differences negatively. They reject them for various reasons. Some, like me, are curious, even fascinated both by cultural differences and how we as humans share so many similarities along with our differences. In Module 2, I guide you to swap your judgment for active curiosity. It could save your life and the lives of those you love. I say that because my appreciation of and acceptance of others' differences literally did save my life. On the day that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, I was at a mixed-race track meet in Wichita, Kansas. As a tall white guy, I was an obvious and easy target. I was hit in the head with a pipe, but before I could be seriously hurt, my black teammates came to my aid and saved me from further injury. Their act of kindness in that moment impacted me greatly. In the weeks following the riot, I participated in community discussion groups that calmed the racial tension. Facilitated by adults, these discussions provided safe places for black, white, and Hispanic high school students to express everything we wanted to share. What was said in these groups was eye-opening for me. I had no idea, up until that point, what it was like to see our shared world through their eyes. This was a vivid demonstration of how getting naked clears the clutter, resolves issues quickly and easily by sharing naked truths without exaggeration, drama, or agenda. Use it to create a pure future, free of misunderstandings, by clearly expressing your truths and truly hearing others. As a therapist and coach, I have helped many people change behaviors or mindsets that supported unhealthy perspectives or damaging behaviors by simply asking them to try a different way. Drive a different route home from work. Eat with your non-dominant hand. Listen to music you don't usually choose or walk down a road you've never been on and just be curious. Observe nature, people, buildings, dogs, even birds and bees. This trying a different way will lead to you also trying different behaviors. Pull out your worksheet now and write this down. Try a different way, then do it. Slow down, take a pause, and experience each moment with a new perspective. Break your usual routine or trance to make space for transformation. This practice is also called pattern interrupt. It creates shifts in your perspectives, your mindset, and your behavior. Life is about learning. If you don't like how it's going, do one thing different then another, and then another. Think of these changes as experiments. The new learning they deliver shifts your awareness, your related behaviors, and over time, your actions. Adopt any new ways of being and doing that you like. Discard those that you don't, and continue experimenting and practicing to make the new habits secure. This awareness is key to fully experiencing life in the moment. I experienced this big time when I started college. 1968 was a time of great transformation for me and for our society. I experienced lots of new learning both inside and outside the classroom. As a freshman, I showed up in dress slacks and sweaters and ties. The next year I was wearing John Lennon glasses, longer hair, and hippie beats. For me, college life truly was an experiment. I tried many new things, and my practice of keeping the best and tossing the rest ensured that I made straight A's and graduated with honors. I urge you to experience life fully. Capture the power of the moment by suspending judgment, ejecting your inner critic and welcoming new experiences, and then stack your moments into pillars of achievement. In the late 60s, there was a lot of conflict in the world, well, as there is today. We had race riots in the US, the war in Vietnam, etc. Yet today, political opinions divide nations, families, and friends like never before and immigration has brought different cultures into close proximity. Both situations produce heated emotions. When fear shows up as anger or rage, it can be difficult to discern your next action. Here's a useful distinction you can use to keep your cool in challenging situation. Ask yourself in this situation, am I an observer or a participant? Pull out your worksheet and write this down. Am I an observer or a participant? Then try it. Personal development is a process. You can either be an observer and watch change happen, go with the flow and let others shape your future, or you can be an active participant in your unfolding life. 
Be openness. Don't just claim you are. Be a valued friend, a cherished member, and welcome guest in diverse communities because you are open to hearing, accepting, celebrating, and supporting others' accomplishments, difficulties, and disappointments. Doing so shows your personal magnetism of trust. You'll be considered interesting or knowledgeable simply by being open and curious about different people, places, and perspectives. Now, Module 3 examines the many situations today where it seems smarter to act as if we are who people expect us to be. Diligent employees, loving parents, etc. At times, our social culture directs our choices. Back in the 1950s, women had only three career choices, teacher, nurse, or housewife. Today, women in many Middle Eastern cultures and other countries face similar restrictions when it comes to education, work, and personal power. But when we take on expected roles and abandon our true selves, it can cost us our happiness, our passions, and the fulfillment of our life purpose. It can also lead to sickness, misunderstanding, and self-hatred, especially for people who don't have at least one person they can talk to about anything and everything. Without that, our psychological and physical health suffers and our efforts to grow are stunted. That's why getting naked with the right people in the right place at the right time is essential. My decades of work, first as a therapist, then as a business coach working with leaders and teams, and a personal coach working with individuals, prove this to be a fact, not a theory. It is possible to be real, to be authentic. Yes, it takes courage to move past what's socially acceptable or usual, but the rewards for doing so are huge. You will attain personal peace, free up your heart, and ease your mind by clearing out old thoughts and feelings. You can demonstrate to others that you've walked in their shoes by expressing your understanding of issues you too previously struggled to grasp with evidence of your expanded perceptions. You can evoke calmness by eliminating upset, shock, or resistance. You can choose what triggers you, deactivate your hot buttons, and neutralize your memories so they can no longer spark problems in your present or future, and you will claim your rights to a sharp-as-attack mindset, become known as astute, fair, and trustworthy, by sharing the just the facts without exaggeration, drama, or agenda. Getting naked really is essential for our mental and physical health. I can't stress that enough. But what we are taught and what we learn through our own life experience often leads us to do just the opposite. In college, I was constantly warned of the danger of getting too close to my clients. This traditional approach paradoxically tells therapists not to connect too closely with clients to protect themselves from their pain and exhorts therapists to empathize, connect genuinely and authentically, and allow a therapeutic closeness to grow. These two contradictory directives create a dilemma. Just how close should a therapist be with their client? The coach's dilemma is similar to the therapist, but without the therapeutic distance, it's even more confusing. If we are not delivering treatment, are we then more like a friend? As we hear our clients' stories, how do we protect ourselves from feeling their pain as our own? And if coaches are less like therapists and more like friends, this challenge is faced by caring people everywhere. How do we support our friends and family members with love and compassion without harming ourselves in the process? The answer is simple. Practice getting naked, share your truth with those you trust and invite them to share their truths with you. You'll learn how to go out on a limb and thrive. You'll know the strategies to stop playing it safe, embrace change, and new thinking with your expanded worldview. You'll see new paths and opportunities with your eyes open to how you fit into the grand scheme of things. So are there any good reasons to put on a mask? Yes, there are. Protecting yourself in an uncertain or hostile environment while traveling alone in a foreign country. And dealing with backstabbing colleagues at work are two good reasons to wear a mask holding yourself together for practical purposes, interacting calmly with medical professionals about the care of a terminally ill family member is one situation where this is also helpful, presenting a professional face to your work team the morning after learning that your teenage son's girlfriend is pregnant is also a good use of masking your true feelings. In the program, you'll get crystal clear on when and where to mask and unmask. You'll live free and be free when you break the chains of concealment by dropping any mask you use to falsely keep yourself secure. You'll speak the truth by dropping the binding nature and need for a poker face, tough guy, or victim character, and you'll achieve free speech status. Be the person others can say anything to 
without any thoughts of repercussions. Here's an unmasking experiment you can try today. The next time someone says, hi, how are you? Don't automatically say, I'm fine, if you're not. If they are someone you trust, ask them if they want your true response. Yes, they will probably be surprised when they, you say that, but telling them what's going on in your life and how you feel about it can build and deepen caring connections, both at work, with family members, and in your social circles. Pull out the worksheet and write this down. The reason you want to do this only with people you trust is that you don't want to unmask with anyone who may use what you share against you to control or manipulate you. Dr. Stephen Cartman developed a drama triangle that documented typical behavior patterns between victims, rescuers, and persecutors. You may not fit into any of those roles yourself, but you've certainly seen this play out with others, and if you've ever been a victim, a rescuer, or a persecutor, knowing how to break these entrenched patterns and get yourself out of the triangle is essential when you meet someone who pulls you in. By cultivating self-awareness, you will gain authentic transparency, snap your elephant chain of limiting beliefs, abandon faking it, and instead just be and do you. You will also be the one who builds trust by providing a coming clean environment for another. We all know people who abuse our confidences and harm us in the process. That's why we choose to mask with certain people in specific situations. However, as you practice getting naked, you'll be able to mask less and less often. You'll stop being used and manipulated by others by developing an emotional early warning system. Since I've already touched on our logical and real fear of exposing ourselves to people who might harm us, let's take a moment to explore a fear a little further by looking at module four. I start by sharing an experience I recall vividly. During a rock climbing lesson in the Canyonlands of Utah, I reached a place where I did not feel secure. I wasn't sure I could reach the next handhold. My foot began shaking and my whole body felt tight. I looked down at my instructor who said, you're feeling fear. That's okay, Pat. Go ahead and when you're ready, reach up for the next hold. In that moment, I felt so vulnerable, scared and embarrassed. But when my instructor said, we all feel fear, acknowledge it, then move and see the next handhold, I was able to let go of the fear and move on. This has become a guiding principle for my life. Let go of the fear and move on. After all, I was roped to guides and really could not have been hurt. I was just feeling naked on the wall and embarrassed that I was not braver. It turns out I'm not alone. Most of the time, the fear we feel is unwarranted and exaggerated. So let go of the fear and move on. Write this down on your worksheet. Pause the seminar now and consider how your life will be different if you adopt this as your guiding principle. Fear is always about what has happened, brought forward in our imagination to what could happen. What you fear might be something you've only heard about from others seen in a movie or on TV. Interestingly, we react to perceived fear with the same three physical responses that arise when we face real danger, fight, flight, or freeze. Most people think there's only two fear responses, fight or flight. A freeze has been added because it's how we react to sudden danger, loss, tragedy, illness, or hurt. If we can't fight or flee, we freeze, like a deer in the headlights. When we freeze, our nervous systems are operating in overdrive, flooding our bodies with stress hormones. When we're not fighting or fleeing, we neutralize these hormones by spontaneously shaking. So when you're in the grip of this hormone surge, rather than waiting for it to subside, we can override it. Get ourselves moving and out of danger by practicing mindfulness, becoming centered, present, or focused on now. In my program, I'll show you how to cultivate mindfulness so that when fear stops you in your tracks, you can move through it and return to the present. Become a model of steadiness when facing fear by fluidly embracing change and new thinking with your expanded mental and emotional perspectives. I'll also show you how to be braver, more courageous. This path starts by recognizing and exploring your own vulnerabilities, a point of origin that surprises almost everyone. Being vulnerable allows us to uncover the best learnings and deepest personal growth. And if you equate vulnerability with weakness, think again. The Navy SEALs I have worked with learn to be vulnerable in basic training. For them, and ER doctors, firefighters, and other first responders, what we would find incredibly stressful is a series of routine quick decisions they are well trained to make. SWAT, Navy SEALs, Special Forces, and FBI agents understand that fear is a healthy gift because courage is the product of our vulnerability, not our strengths. Vulnerability is the path to courage and success. 
Vulnerability also forces self-awareness. Executive coach and leadership consultant Lorraine Key says, think of vulnerability as a stew made up of uncertainty, risk, and challenge. Pretending you are not vulnerable places you in a perpetual state of denial and stress. But Lorraine goes on to say, resilience is what enables you to withstand challenges to your established way of life, to bend without breaking, and vulnerability is the soft underbelly of resilience. Your ability to be vulnerable stimulates your brain to find ways to adapt to a constantly changing environment. So, of course, vulnerability nurtures growth. I love this quote. It makes a strong statement that fits perfectly with Getting Naked's core curriculum, which equips you to build a ladder of insight by providing the building blocks of a core set of beliefs, releasing the confidence to lasso fear and leverage vulnerability to achieve greater value and spiritual enjoyment. People who choose to live unfulfilled lives over experiencing change or discomfort hold the false belief that it is easier to settle for mediocrity than to risk the possibilities of criticism and failure. Sadly, they've got it backwards. It's when we are prepared to move through our fears and allow ourselves to be truly vulnerable that the possibility of greatness opens up. Fear of change is the number one reason people choose to work with a coach. But guess what? It takes courage to welcome growing pains and the discomfort of life change. And the only way to build courage is by feeling your fear and moving through it to get past it. Every entrepreneurial undertaking requires courage and involves risk. Experimentation is at the heart of innovation. So lean into your vulnerability and embrace the wisdom every experiment and experience delivers. Innovation and vulnerability are two sides of the same coin. Accept this and you'll be able to move beyond your comfort zone, build emotional strength and add great depth to your emotional life. Being vulnerable not only makes us more courageous, innovative and creative, it makes us more real. Getting naked cultivates your ability to be vulnerable, to nurture growth, resilience and courage with the counterintuitive engine that promotes action and more brave acts. Getting naked makes you an agent of real. The architect who separates perceived danger in the dialogue and it aids by adding real self-speak to achieve goals. In my own life experience and work, I have seen many people become happier and more fulfilled in their relationships when they learn to get naked and be real. They become self-aware enough to distinguish real danger from perceived danger. They feel more free, less burdened. They open up to fully experiencing all aspects of life. As a result, they are courageous, vulnerable, mindful, accepting of, loving, and compassionate toward themselves and others. When you accept yourself and share your truths with people you trust, you truly flourish and blossom. As a young therapist, I worked with a client I'll call Anna, whose experience support this fully. She was a cutter. Anna would cut herself, then pour muriatic acid on the cuts to numb the pain. Becoming more open, more vulnerable, and courageous over time changed her life. She got involved in activities and met new friends. Her cutting behavior fell away. When we ended our work together, Anna seemed firmly on the path to healing. Becoming more whole, more real, happier, and better able to relate to the people and world she lived in completely transformed her life. Now, Anna's case is extreme, but not uncommon. Just consider how you wound yourself. What do you do that causes you pain, thinking you may deserve it? My therapeutic process enabled Anna to unload a heavy burden after which she no longer needed to instigate self-abuse in order to feel or to numb her feelings. It also became a huge stepping stone in my own journey to becoming real. There's no question that life happens. By taking on the challenges it delivers, we become stronger, more resilient, and even more appreciative. We are all compilations of our experiences, our memories, and our perceptions. What we learn from them is key. Whether we choose change or not to change, for life to continue, our choices have to be accepted and digested. Change is going to happen anyway. It's at these pivotal points when we make life choices that we most need to be emotionally naked with someone we trust. Knowing how to get naked emotionally to make your best life choices is what this program maps out for you. I don't use the word failure. I speak about results. Life is an experiment, so learn from your results and make different choices. Because if you keep doing the same thing, you'll keep getting the same results. We do better when we are purposeful in our intentions, but we also have to be willing and able to adapt to changing situations and the mysteries of life. 
One thing I've learned about life is that while you've got it, there's always more to explore, experience, and discover. And being real, participating, taking on challenges with purpose and passionate curiosity is what makes us feel more vital, more alive. When you become real, you are loved despite of, even because of, your imperfections. When you become real, you give up aspects of yourself and your self-image that distort who you truly are. Largely, these are false beliefs. We all gather them, much like a snowball that adds layers of snow as it rolls down a snowy slope. The difference between false beliefs and snowballs is that false beliefs come from many different sources, and they don't just melt away. I explore this in depth in Module 5 of Getting Naked. False beliefs can be created when someone sticks a label on you that at the time is untrue to intentionally hurt you. And when you misunderstand a communication from an influential person and never explore or question its truth. Over time, your inner critic concocts rationales that appear to confirm these negative perspectives. And so false statements and misunderstandings become self-fulfilling predictions that you realize in the ways you behave and interact with others. For example, someone who believes they're already disliked will tend to be a loner, defensive, prickly, not traits that others find attractive, appealing, or likable. We can also create false self-perceptions through pretentious fakery, pretending to be someone or something we know we're not, because we can, we want to, and we find it in some way rewarding. Getting naked will reduce distortions and guide you to shed the false beliefs masking the real you. You'll fire your inner judge, release your inner critic, and embrace and appreciate you. Experience yourself. See and feel all your beauty, intelligence, emotions, and physicality. Experience life free of the burdens of distorted beliefs and perceptions. Being abused by others can also load us up with false beliefs about ourselves. Winnie Harlow, the famous model, was severely bullied as a child, called a cow, a zebra, all manner of disparaging slurs due to her skin condition. She changed schools numerous times, even contemplated suicide. Opting to be homeschooled taught her to love herself despite what others said about or to her. She gained the courage to stand up to anyone or anything that blocked her path in life. She has since become a highly successful model and spokesperson for Vitiligo, which was what made her different the reason others bullied her. Unfortunately, many who are bullied go on to become bullies themselves because they haven't cleaned up their hurt. That's another reason getting naked is so important. Finding someone to share your truth with opens a path to resolving old wounds. You can break the once bullied, now a bullier cycle. To explore what you might need to share in a naked conversation, one of my exercises asks you to look at what you find ugly in yourself and decide whether you consider the same things ugly in others. Are your grandmother's wrinkles ugly, or do they make her more beautiful? Is the scar your cousin got during military service ugly, or is it a hero mark? Write this down on your worksheet now. What do you consider ugly, and what do you consider ugly in others? Explore that. Look at what you find ugly in yourself, and decide whether you consider the same things ugly in others. Take the opportunity to shift your mindset, to change how you see others and yourself, to release the burden of self-judgment, to potentially save the thousands of dollars you may otherwise spend on surgical procedures that might make you less real and considerably less happy than you might expect. So pause the seminar now and take five minutes to experience this process yourself. This exercise is not limited to your physical appearance. For every aspect of your life in which you're disappointed, you'll likely find a set of limiting beliefs blocking your way. My Getting Naked program helps you uncover them all and shows you how to replace them with beliefs that are real and empowering. Try on your new beliefs. Act as if they are real and see how your story changes. My experience says that it will, and you'll find the changes delightful. Easy dimensional moments. Achieve the feeling in a short time interval of gaining access to enormous blocks of vital information in both depth and breadth. When you do, you fully understand how to achieve an emotionally naked state. Of course, my program doesn't only deal with external appearances. In Module 6, you'll get to discover your real inner beauty. I'll give you a glimpse of what spiritual teachers know that the rest of us must learn. Inner beauty produces external beauty. Remember the old axiom that says beauty is in the eye of the beholder? We're all captivated by the 90-year-old with a twinkle in their eyes, despite the fact that those twinkling eyes are surrounded by wrinkled and sagging skin. People who live their lives from this perspective, who look at the world, see its beauty through its horror and ugliness, cannot help 
becoming beautifully externally. Unfortunately, most of us don't look at ourselves through the eyes of love. We view ourselves more critically than anyone else through lenses clouded by judgment. If this is where you are when it comes to external beauty, you can work on your appearance and improve your body if you want to some degree. You can change your hair, modify your features, but you can't alter your true self, nor should you ever want to. What makes you real is the source of your inner beauty. Cultivating your inner beauty develops your external beauty so you win on both fronts. One of my exercises in this module challenges you to find out what others see as your real inner beauty. What they say makes you real, unique, and lovable. Now many of us avoid looking at ourselves too deeply because we are afraid of what we may discover. According to Deepak Chopra, what you find when you go inside is, quote, a rich world streaming with thoughts, feelings, sensations, memories, hopes, wishes, dreams, and fears, end quote. Yes, he said fears, but these are just inner versions of fears you're already well aware of. There's nothing surprising or frightening here. I deepen the theme of perceived versus real by exploring a concept proposed in A Course in Miracles, that the external world we live in is no more real than our inner world of hopes, dreams, and fears. Experimenting with this concept opens an opportunity to create the life you want, to be yourself, to embrace your uniqueness and your vulnerabilities, and surround yourself with raving fans and supportive true friends. To accomplish this, you'll need to identify when and with whom you feel most lovable and most loved. So yes, write this down on your worksheet too. Identify when and with whom you feel most lovable. It might be when you're with longtime friends, family, your spouse or life partner, or someone you met quite recently, but feel very connected with. Then examine the flip side. When and with whom do you feel unlovable, unloved, or unseen? Now pause the seminar and spend a few minutes with these tasks capturing your answers. Given our natural bias to be self-critical, your second list may be longer than your first. The objective is to blend your perceptions and beliefs with a dose of honesty from others you trust. It is also about choosing your community. You do not have to believe anyone who is hurtfully critical of you. Next time you encounter someone who makes you feel unlovable, unloved, or unseen, use the insights from this exercise to move out of fear into self-love, acceptance, and authenticity. My goal is for this program to give you the freedom to be yourself, to accept yourself, to not feel judged, rejected, or hurt by anything others say. This takes some work and practice. But once you claim who you are, you can hear others' awkward attempts, whether intended or not, to belittle or criticize you as mere projections of their own personalities. When you've learned to not take their comments personally, you can choose how to hear them and decide how to respond rather than reacting without thinking. You'll activate your personal reset button, your internal switch that triggers self-love, releases your inner beauty, and vaporizes your inner critic's demoralizing messages. You'll groom your mind for freedom, achievement, and success. Realign your core beliefs and score big with new practices that expose the positive, attractive, and appealing you. It will take time to get there, so for now, today, when the fear is really deep and you can't navigate it alone, who will you turn to? Who will you get naked with to ease the fear and release the burden? Set this up today. Begin with a practice session and see how it feels to truly get naked. Do you suspect or hope there are aspects of yourself still to discover? In my roles as a psychologist, life, and leadership coach, I focus on what my clients do not recognize about their own uniqueness. Learning what we're afraid of or what hurts us are important discoveries, and the magic of reframing putting the new picture of ourselves in a new frame, seeing it in a new light, as a positive, not a negative, is truly life-changing. Coaches are trained to see what their clients do not, in themselves and in their situations. Sometimes the best way forward is to focus on what you want in the present and future. Specific goals and dreams that help you uncover unique characteristics that are presently hidden, put them to work, and let them shine. You can also look at others who share your unique characteristics and learn about yourself from them. I created a discovery process based on this approach that I call the personal treasure hunt. In my program, you'll use it to expose aspects of yourself that you have developed by accident and on purpose, to see what you've never seen before, to discern if any traits you used to take for granted have fallen away. These are great moments of recognition that open up opportunities for a desirable change. Adult treasure hunters win twice. Be one. You'll get the prize and make the rules. The possibilities this offers are mind-boggling. 
Most adults strive to be unique, to stand out in the crowd. Yet as teenagers, most of us just wanted to fit in. In Module 7, I introduced the concept of being real by talking about the homemade cookies I used to bake with my daughters. Since store-bought cookies all looked and tasted pretty much the same, we started making cookies that were different shapes and sizes. Compared to the uniform store-bought cookies, our cookies had imperfections because they were made to express our own uniqueness in the moment. Except that imperfections are what make us homemade and you'll begin to embrace the meaning of real. It makes no sense for us to strive for physical perfection. It's a goal we can never achieve and should never pursue. It's certainly true that some people who look different, like Winnie, who we discussed earlier, or children born with a cleft lip and palate, want to look more like normal children. That's understandable, as looking different can attract the sort of unkind teasing that leaves children feeling ugly or defective. So the store-bought cookie lesson is a great one. Different is not bad or frightening. It's interesting and desirable. A machine may operate perfectly for a while, but over time it will begin to wear down and require repair. People were never intended to be perfect. The goal isn't to emulate a machine, but to embrace the imperfection of being human. Can you imagine looking at a magnificent rainbow and complaining that one of its colors isn't perfect? That's ridiculous, and yet that's exactly what we do when we judge ourselves. I have coached many people plagued by the need to be perfect. Ironically, if someone could ever achieve perfection, few people would tolerate them as a perfect individual would be a constant reminder to the rest of us of our shortcomings. Since we are definitely not factory made and also don't see ourselves clearly, I have an experiment for you. Take an inventory of your imperfections. Then share your inventory with others to see if they agree. Prepare to be surprised by what they say. This exercise will enable to see how your imperfections actually serve and benefit you. Write this down. Take an inventory of your imperfections and then share it with others you trust to see if they agree with you. Give it a try. When you consider your imperfections, what aspect of yourself do you try to deny, hide, or despise? What experiences expose these traits? And what caused you to cover them up again? Are they connected to times in your life when you felt vulnerable, hurt, or invisible? In my program, we dig into this because as humans, we've all had some of those experiences, and that's okay. What's not okay is continuing to feel you should deny, hide, or despise these aspects of yourself. Your experiences may hold stories that need to be shared. They may have to do with being bullied at a young age. They could involve abuse, the death of a parent, strengths or dreams you're blocking. Your stories could also be connected to dark memories, regrets, or shame and guilt. Take the opportunity to get naked with a trusted friend and sort through your stories. And if they're tied to a past that's too painful to share with a trusted friend, hire a professional and invest in your healing. After giving some thought to how owning these aspects of yourself will make you feel, you'll try them on in your own imagination. Doing so may give you the courage to own them for real. Your imperfect cookies, when owned and accepted, will be remarkable, unique, and ready for display. What you once considered imperfect will now have immense value and prestige. When you can share and simply acknowledge, yeah, that happened, now what? You will be on the path to healing, to becoming whole, to living the life you desire, to embracing your differences and boosting your confidence. Flipping this switch changes what you used to see as bad or frightening into interesting and desirable. You can also reclaim denied dreams to fit your circumstances. Maybe you dreamed of becoming a Major League Baseball player. If that's no longer possible, perhaps you'd enjoy sharing your love of the game with children, coaching a little league, or treating yourself to season tickets for your local baseball team, attending games regularly on your own or with a friend. Where there's a dream, there's always a path to realizing it, even if you find it a different frame to the one you had originally imagined. For example, I love horses. I think they are the most spiritual animal on earth. I once dreamed of owning a horse. That never happened, so I often volunteer at a place called Hearts and Horses, where handicapped children interact with horses. This has proven to be therapeutic both for them and for me. Do some brainstorming and reimagining of your own, and if it's meant to be, your thinking will reignite the flame that kept your dream alight in you for so long. When that happens, don't let it go again. Put your dreams into new frames, seize the joy, indulge your passion, and you'll find yourself laughing and smiling a whole lot more, even in your sleep. A wise old lady once said, Have no regrets. The elderly usually don't regret what they did, 
but rather the things they did not do. The only people who fear death are those with regrets. In my own life experience and work, I've seen many people become happier and find their relationships more fulfilling when they learn to love who they really are. This ability to be clear about who you are and accurate about what you bring to life is perhaps the most important element of what I call real honesty or naked truth. In my program's eighth module, I quote the late Scott Dinsmore, a California entrepreneur who founded Live Your Legend. Scott said, quote, so much of the public world of entrepreneurs, authors, CEOs, and leaders is masked by a huge coat of bullshit. People seem to want to put off this image like they're perfect. And it's often out of fear that the people who respect them won't love them anymore if they show their true colors. So they paint a false picture and do a huge disservice to everyone who looks up to them. By putting up this front, they create these expectations that are impossible to meet. It's not fair and it's downright selfish. He also shared nakedly on his blog, 35 honest stories, fears, and facts I kind of wish you didn't know about me. They span a vast range of topics from I'm late way more than I'd like to be to I'm terrible at pretty much every sport involving a ball. I have a very limiting belief that if I don't over prepare, I will fail. I have the musical taste of a 13 year old girl and I don't know what I'm doing a lot of the time. How did his community respond? by sharing naked stories about themselves, naturally. I've replicated this exercise in module eight. Give it a try, see how many vulnerable aspects of yourselves you can come up with that you're a little uncomfortable about sharing. Pause this seminar for a moment now and see how many you can come up with. This experiment is deeply enlightening. Let me know what you discover in Getting Naked Program private Facebook group, a safe place for people enrolled in this program to make new friends and share naked truths. In the tale of the Velveteen Rabbit, the skin horse wisely told his protege, once you become real, you encourage others to live life more authentically, whether that means taking more chances or exemplifying a sense of wonder, curiosity, and openness, rather than cynicism, criticism, and fear. This is a necessary lesson for anyone who yearns for a more joyful, fulfilling, authentic, and influential life. How do you define authentic living for yourself? In my program, I ask you to consider several examples of authentic living, then define your own by mapping out your ideal authentic day from the moment you open your eyes in the morning until you fall asleep at night. What are you doing? Who are you with? Where are you? How do your activities make you feel about yourself and those around you? How do they make you feel about your life? When you get naked and snag the power of your internal time, the math is truly astounding. Taking away just two negatives eliminates second guessing and your most persistent inner critic nagging. You free up gigabytes of mind space to assume new, rewarding positives. Module nine focuses on breaking out of self-imprisonment, adjusting the emotional responses, beliefs, and perspectives that have been keeping you stuck, shut down, or locked up. If you're like most people, you've probably imprisoned yourself from time to time. You might be afraid to share what you see as shaming, hurtful, or just plain uncomfortable truths. You may also be keeping some beautiful and unique desires under lock and key. I've already stressed how important and necessary it is to have a safe place when needed. Your safe place is where you go to recharge your human energy source. It shouldn't feel like a prison, but instead your refuge, your fortress of power, your place of comfort and restoration. We arrive in this world naked, and we will leave this world naked, yet we won't remember either experience. Now there's a new choice for living between the dashes, your date of birth and your date of death. You can get naked and live naked. My invitation to you is to celebrate the dare of nakedness, to fully embrace all that's available in a life well lived, to enjoy deep intimacy, which is ultimately about emotional nakedness, you don't want to be emotionally naked without careful discrimination any more than you want to be physically naked in an unsafe environment or relationship. Self-protection is a very human instinct, one at which we're universally proficient. Yet when we can be intimate with a trusted other, there is no need for a disguise. We spend most of our lives shielded from weather, society's norms, and our own learned embarrassment. Those protective shields also block us from accessing real joy, true intimacy, and deep passion as adults. Do you remember loving to be naked as a kid? Have you witnessed the gleeful nudity of young children? 
As toddlers, my daughters threw off their clothes in an exuberant expression of freedom that proudly declared a moment unencumbered. Wouldn't you like to reclaim that mindset? To be as vulnerable, honest, transparent, shame-free, and unburdened as a toddler? My program is not about physical nakedness. You're well aware of that by now. Getting naked is about being emotionally transparent, spiritually vulnerable, having the willingness to expose your deepest truths. To get naked requires a confidant, a friend, a coach, or counselor to witness your authenticity. Why are we so heavily shielded, so out of touch with our true selves? It's because emotions in our culture are greatly feared. Many believe they're impossible to control. Who hasn't been frightened upon seeing a crazy bag lady or a hobo on a city street cursing passersby or having animated conversations with no one? While we can cover our physical nakedness with clothing, emotional nakedness seems more challenging to dress. The little known fact is that simply acknowledging and expressing our emotions makes them either dissipate or transform. It's only when we resist them that they grow and mutate, get out of hand, seem out of our control. In my program, you'll learn how to release burdens and gain emotional freedom through naked sharing. You'll also find out why living on purpose produces a more fulfilling and complete human experience. In Module 10, you'll explore in an area where coaches do a lot of work, finding your life purpose. Humans lack deep connection to other people and their purpose. We have acquaintances and friends, maybe even huge social media followings, but often these relationships are superficial. As a result, we don't have people in our lives who really hear us, both what we say and what we don't say. We need people to invite us to share our truths, to encourage us to open up when we're shut down. Most of us aren't connected to our life's meaning and purpose either. Life purpose and spiritual searching most often emerge, sometimes simultaneously, in midlife, after we've experienced many life stages. Of course, each of us seeks fulfillment and authentic happiness in our own way, but each of us has a life purpose that has been with us since we were very young. Sometimes our yearning for fulfillment becomes so intense that we step off our life path and devote ourselves to the search, seeking the deep sources of satisfaction that we've glimpsed now and then throughout our lives. When you experience a profound sense of being in the flow, being in the right place at the right time while using your gifts, you are likely living your purpose. It calls you forth. It's something larger than you that deeply connects you with others. It may show up as a compelling vision or a more meaningful way to live. When first glimpsed, you may have lacked the courage to follow the call or allowed life stresses and serious pursuits to cover up the glimmer of what you knew to be true. If you're over 40, now is the time. If you're younger, enjoy your journey, make thoughtful choices, and connect with an older mentor. A trusted friend or personal coach can help you discern and uncover your calling or life purpose, transform it into the inner compass that sets your direction in life, guides you in all you do, helps you navigate when you go off course. Many people discover once they have chosen a work role or a way of life that is not fulfilling, it is because they have lost their way. If they were a boat, we would say they lacked a rudder and were adrift in a sea of circumstances. Some people feel as if they are surviving, but only with a struggle. Or they may be striving to achieve, but not feel much satisfaction in their accomplishments. In the natural cycle of life, a number of clues emerge that suggest you're ready for life purpose work. I'm going to share five of these. So grab your worksheet and write down the clues that resonate with you. One, you feel listless, fatigued, and disenchanted. Two, you have experienced losses, deaths, health issues, or unemployment that make your old way of living impossible. Three, you are overwhelmed with life and ask, is this the life I really want to lead? Four, you have undergone significant life transitions. Your children have left, you've lost your job, mandatory retirement is approaching, or divorce has occurred. And five, you feel a serious mismatch between your current work or role and your deep desires. In our private as well as professional lives, getting back on purpose may require significant change. Living authentically on purpose is not easy in today's world where speed, multitasking, constant change, and noise dominate. In Module 11, in Getting Naked's core curriculum, we look at what it takes to manifest deep, lasting personal change. I'm going to explain this by sharing a passage by Robert E. Quinn in his book, Deep Change. He says, quote, ultimately, deep change is a spiritual process. 
Loss of alignment with purpose occurs when and for whatever reason we get turned around and begin to pursue what's not important. This process begins innocently enough. In pursuing some justifiable end, we make a trade-off of some kind. We know it's wrong, but we rationalize our choice, often using the end to justify the means. As time passes, something inside us starts to wither. We're reduced to living at the rational goal-seeking level. We lose our vitality and begin to work from sheer discipline. Our energy is not naturally replenished and we experience little to no joy in what we do. What we are experiencing is slow death. To recover and regroup, we must recognize the lies we've been telling ourselves, acknowledge our own weakness, greed, and sensitivity, lack of vision and courage, and once we do, we begin to understand the clear need for a course correction, and we slowly begin to reinvent ourselves. End quote. The truth is, almost every moment offers an opportunity to live your life purpose. By consciously choosing work relationships, avocations, creative pursuits, and other life elements, you can find fulfilling ways to experience your purpose. Life purpose work also helps you begin to sense and live on a higher level of consciousness. My colleagues and I regularly encounter clients who have been living out roles, values, and commitments that were assigned to them early on by their family of origin. They often seek coaching because those old ways no longer work. Once they discover their individual life purpose, they may find with sadness or elation that the roles they were assigned and the work they pursued never really fit them well. This discovery often leads to a realization that they feel called to live a different life purpose, one that is uniquely their own. It may have nothing to do with their family's desires or agenda. Earlier I spoke about breaking out of your self-imprisonment. This was an ironic choice as I have delivered professional coach training to many federal prisoners. I'm proud to say that in most cases it empowered them to effectively turn their lives around both while they were still incarcerated and after they returned to society. Their coaching skills enabled them to make better choices, to live lives they never dreamed possible. Their wardens, psychologists, education directors, and chaplains all reported how differently they behaved with each other, their families during visitations, and on a daily basis with other prisoners who did not get coach training. One female prisoner used her life coaching skills to support men and women re-entering society after spending time behind bars. She discovered her true purpose after 18 years in prison herself. In the life purpose I have done, both for myself and with my clients, a question I have found most enlightening to ask is, what does life want for me? Instead of the more usual question, what do I want for my life? Hugh Prather in Notes to Myself writes, quote, Today never hands me the same thing twice. Life is a mixture of unsolved problems, ambiguous victories, and vague defeats, with very few moments of clear peace. My struggle with today is worthwhile, but it is a struggle nonetheless and one I will never finish. We're always in a state of becoming. But if we keep ourselves imprisoned and protected always, we will become what we already are and live as we already do and nothing else. My favorite passage in the same book can be found a little further on. Prather says, quote, Perfectionism is slow death. If everything were to turn out just like I would want it to or just like I would plan for it to, then I would never experience anything new. My life would be an endless repetition of stale successes. When I make a mistake, I experience something unexpected. After many decades, living my own life is an exciting adventure, experimenting with change often, teaching and coaching thousands to do likewise, I have concluded every experience is a good experience. Eventually. We experience both chosen and unchosen change. But even if we experience what we would not have chosen, we eventually have to make it a choice. It's happened. Accept what it is, learn from it so we can move from what was to what will be. Sharing this in real conversations with a trusted listener is what naked living is really about. Make it your goal to live purposely, not perfectly. To design your ideal future, you must make a plan and be present to life's natural flow. Our lives are shaped by incompletions, fears, attachments, addictions, unmet needs, procrastinations, and tolerations. Like barnacles on the hull of a boat, we must have an annual cleaning at minimum for smoother sailing. Clean up your clutter, your unfinished business, incompletions, or wounds. Repack your bags. Replace what's dead weight with useful items. Orient your life around your values and gifts. Be an observer of life. Be curious and learn what you have the opportunity to learn. Life is moving forward always, so you can't step in the same river twice. 
Being a leadership coach for more than 25 years, an author of many books and a teacher of coaching skills, I often discuss the topic of work-life balance with clients. That's the focus of the last module in my program's core curriculum. To achieve balance, I believe it's important to have a daily centering activity such as meditation, walks in nature, yoga, tai chi, or reading. It's also important to have an instant center to go to in your body when you're thrown off balance in your life. A Cirque du Soleil performer taught me that balance is momentary points of stability in a constant state of motion. My goals for you are to be purposeful in finding your place of momentary balance as you move through life and to develop the agility to continually find your point of balance as life moves forward and your circumstances change. As I wrap up this seminar, I'd like to share a final set of insights from my Getting Naked program. I invite you to adopt these practices to create a place of balance and personal power for yourself. Pull out your worksheet and write down whichever or all of these practices that appeal to you. Number one, start by thinking of the most beautiful place you've ever been. Go there in your imagination. Pay attention to all the details, what you hear, what you see, what you feel in that place. Go there in your mind whenever you need to be energized or calm. This is your place of power, security, and centering. Number two, create a centering routine that you can do effortlessly, like a daily walk in nature, bicycling, tai chi, yoga, inspirational reading and journaling or meditating. What else can you choose to do routinely that will return you to your center? Three, revisit your life balance every few months. Check your levels of satisfaction on your life wheel and note where you need to focus greater attention and action. Four, take time for extreme self-care, quietness, and self-reflection. Number five, embrace and welcome change. It is what it is. Change is constant, and that's good as change brings growth. Six, believe in serendipity. Things happen for a reason, but we can't know why until we figure it out. We want a compelling future, one where we live freer. Break free of your self-imposed prison. Get clear on your vision. Identify your passions. For a life of flow and peace, look forward to surprises, side trips, unexpected experiences, and embrace change. Mastering the present is about learning how to allow the future to unfold. In summary, the benefits of getting naked and embracing naked living are a completed past, an energized and purposeful present, a compelling magnetic future that pulls you forward by irresistible attraction. This is what I am committed to you achieving through my program. Both this core curriculum and all of the subject-specific advanced module sets you can access once you've completed the 12 core modules. I look forward to welcoming you into my program, to getting to know you personally, and introducing you to some of my most respected peers in my experts corners. Check out all the program details and opportunities for you on my website, gettingnakedprogram.com. Choose the payment plan that works best for you and get ready for the adventure of your life. To make it easy for you to get into my Getting Naked program, I'm offering a less than half price introductory special. And there's no artificial pressure. That's not my way. My offer is open until the end of this year, December 31st, 2018 at 12 midnight Mountain Time. Now, of course, you'll be celebrating with your loved ones at that hour, so give it some thought. Replay this seminar as often as you'd like. Share it with your closest friends if you want a second or third opinion. Do the exercises. Experience their impact. Discuss it with your loved ones and friends over the holidays. Consider the possibility of totally transforming your life, having more, doing more, being more you, more real, more fulfilled, happier. My program is less than half price right now. Here are the numbers. The regular price for all 12 modules of the Getting Naked With Your Clothes On core curriculum is $1,997. My introductory offer cuts that down to just one payment of $997 or three monthly payments of $359 or four monthly payments of $275. Remember, for this price, you get all 12 modules with exercises, role plays, and games, plus bi-weekly question and answer video chats with me, plus access to my private Facebook group where you'll make new friends and practice naked sharing, 
plus access to my Experts Corner, exclusive web classes. Listen in as I interview acclaimed influencers in the fields of personal growth, health and wellness, spirituality, leadership development, professional success, business growth, and more. A list of my confirmed guests and their topics is posted on the GettingNakedProgram.com website. If you're interested in spreading the word and earning some cash, become a Getting Naked Ambassador. For every friend or colleague that registers, you get 20% of the course fee they pay. Start changing lives and transforming the world. Earn cash for every new adventurer you refer who signs up. Simply create your account, share the linking code I'll provide with your friends, family, and colleagues, and watch your passive income grow as they join up. Well, that's great, but wait, it gets better. Once you are an ambassador, you can upgrade to becoming an ambassador adventurer and experience the program yourself. Bring three people into getting naked with your clothes on and get the option to trade in your three referral commissions for a special pass that you can now use to experience the program yourself. That's right, it only takes three people. When they've paid in full, you'll get three referral commissions or you can choose to join them in the program. You can explore getting naked with your clothes on alongside the three people you referred. Yes, that's sweet. Go ahead, do the math. It's a crazy discount because I want to show you just how much I appreciate your support. This program is the culmination of my life's work. I am 100% committed to making our world a better, happier, and more authentic place, and I invite you to join me in this mission. Plus, I have your back with my 30-day money-back guarantee. I've spent decades leading, coaching, teaching, and witnessing transformation. Take a look at what others say about me. This program contains the best of my best work. I know it can change your life, and I want you to feel completely comfortable jumping in, or as comfortable as you can as you begin to experiment with getting naked. <laughs> of course, a big part of what this program teaches moves you out of your comfort zone. It builds your vulnerability, courage, and emotional strength so you can embrace the wisdom every life experience delivers. I urge you to invest your whole heart in this program. Your return will be enormous. And if you don't wish to continue after 30 days for any reason, just let my team know and we'll refund your payment. Invest in yourself. Grab your seat for $997 or three payments of $359 or four payments of only $275. Commit to welcoming change and get ready to enjoy a new you in the new year or before. If you're ready, Jump in today and begin to experience more joy, fulfillment, and authentic success as you pursue your life's purpose. My 12 multimedia modules are ready to roll. Watch the video, listen to the audio, or download the transcript with your handouts. You'll get to experience a new module every week. Now, does that sound exciting? And if you want to spend more than a week on each module, you're welcome to go at your own pace. The next module will be ready when you are. The choice is yours. But as I say in the program, whether you choose change or don't choose change, you will have to accept change eventually. If you're ready to give up the status quo and instead embrace your life as an exciting adventure, I look forward to welcoming you into the program. See you on the other side.